Hello, everyone. I think we're ready to get started. My name is Nicole Smith. I'm the Director of Library and Archives at the York County History Center. And I'm joined today with, by Adam Benz. Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Adam Benz. I'm the Assistant Director of Library and Archives at the History Center. Today, we are going to be talking about our website, yorkhistorycenter.org, and the resources that are available there for research. If you have any questions today, uh, please type them in the, in the chat feature on Zoom, or uh, please uh, put them into Facebook. We'll be checking Facebook as well. So I am going to share my screen. in a minute. <laughs> okay. So there everyone should see our website. Uh, just a couple announcements before we get started with the website uh, guide. Uh, unfortunately, the History Center has decided to, re, uh, to stay closed until the end of March, given the pandemic situation. Um, however, staff will still be working, will still be available if you call to answer any of your research questions or to process uh, any research or photo orders. We will be having a lot more virtual programming and webinars. So please check out the website, um, our events page, and you can sign up for our e-newsletter on the home page as well. Um, and check out our Facebook page as well. Um, after the holidays, the library will be uh, scheduling Zoom sessions where folks can uh, call in for advice on library resources and navigating websites like ancestry and newspapers.com. So please take a look for that. Um, we're going to be continuing to add resources as we can to the website. Uh, we hope to add more collections, databases, and guides to the collections on our library pages. We also hope to make some improvements this year. A couple of our search features are not working right now, but um, we're hoping to get everything up and running soon. Uh, if you find a page isn't working properly, please let us know. So I'd like to get started uh, by uh, showing you our History at Home page, which is our newest page on our website. Uh, you can get to it by going to the museum's page uh, and uh, hovering over it for the drop down. And here it is. Is that coming through okay, Adam? Okay, good. Uh, this is our History at Home page, and this we created this year during the pandemic so that there'd be a lot more resources for people. Uh, there are articles about uh, and blogs about local history that are updated regularly. There's also um, virtual tours and videos and digital exhibits that you can access from this page. There's also a link here to our YouTube channel, which is uh, the York History Center, York County History Center YouTube channel. And that has uh, recordings of all of our programs and webinars that we've done this year. So please check that out. A couple things that we also have, there's some Zoom backgrounds if you'd like, that are like the one I have. We also have a link to our Share Your History Share your COVID-19 story, which you can click on to learn about more about our COVID-19 collecting. We have some genealogy and oral history resources here, as well as some digital books to keep you um, entertained throughout the winter. There are links to our library page that we're going to look at specifically from our library page in a few minutes. Uh, we also have a new edition, which is links to our digital bookshelf, so you can read past issues of the Journal of York County Heritage. 
So that's really exciting feature that we're happy to have on there. Moving, I'm going to move on. We have a lot to cover today. Uh, our library page, our main library page, which you can access just by clicking on the word library. This is where you would go for updates, news on the library and archives, and uh, information on making donations to the library and archives. Now, I think, uh, I think we're ready. I'm going to pass it over to Adam to tell you more about genealogy research features on our library page. Okay, very good. Let me make sure I have, yes, I do. Good, I have the right page ready. Okay, <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, you know, I've, I've done this a few times, but um, you, have to, you have to be smarter than Zoom. So once you get once you once you do it enough, then you understand what it wants from you. Um, so most uh, the way that most people that interact with the library and archives through our website anyway is through the online research request. And this is one of the things that operates fairly smoothly, uh, at least uh, over the last few weeks. We, we had to get some things fixed on it. Um, but we're in pretty good shape now with getting requests processed quickly through this. Anyway, if you go to the library uh, drop down, it's the second one down here. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's a little message here. Unfortunately, we've had various versions of this up since March, but um, obviously you can you can go through the process that I'm going to talk about. But if you have any uh, general research questions, please feel free to drop me an email. That's really the best way to get in touch with us and get a quick response. Okay, so um, if you are interested in getting genealogy from us or getting hiring us to do genealogy research, this is the best way to do it. Now, we also have the mail-in form, which I'll show you in a second, but the first thing uh, that I like to show people is the research prospectus, which is right here. So I'll open that up. And you should all see this. This is our prospectus. It hasn't changed too much in the last few years, but um, it's a great basic guide to what we provide, what we can provide to people. And uh, in a nutshell, this, these, 12, these 12 things that you see in your screen here are what our volunteers will search for for each request. Now, it's not limited to these 12 things, uh, many volunteers will search beyond these, but these are the 12 things that we guarantee. And, uh, and I know that when they process these, when they're doing their research, they will check them off one by one. So you can be sure that we have looked at at least these resources, one through 12, uh, which is pretty extensive in and of itself. And then there are a few other resources that we will look at depending on what people are looking for, depending on the time period, those kinds of things. Uh, but, you know, the most important, I, I guess I should say the most unique things you can see here are the, or number one and two, um, and the YCHC family files and our card files, uh, which is vital statistics and, and several other things you can see, um, actually several other parts of the card file are described down the list. Um, but our, our card file and our family files are probably the main reason that people will come to do research with us because they are extensive and they are thorough and detailed and reliable. Um, so anyway, those are, these are the 12 basic things that researchers will look at. But uh, in addition to this, well, we kind, of, we kind of do hint at this at number 12, but we will look at online sources, um, ancestry.com, which, uh, which is nothing new to anybody that does genealogy, but uh, we will take a look if you have not your if you have not looked yourself, we will take a look on Ancestry. And we all have also have access to newspapers.com, which is a phenomenal aid to doing genealogy research, research and business research and, um, and other kinds of local research. And we have access to the York Daily Record and to its predecessors, the Gazette and Daily and the Gazette. We also have access to uh, the York Dispatch. Uh, and these are all searchable 
online through newspapers.com. So uh, these, are, these are great resources we have at our disposal. I am going to switch back to this. Uh, so that's the prospectus um, and the research by mail form. I'll just briefly go through this because there we go. Oops, must be this one. Huh, that's weird. Oh, that's right. It's the second page. Huh. So the second page of this prospectus is our mail in form. And you can certainly feel free to do this. Um, if you feel more comfortable with filling out this form and mailing in a check. Um, but what you will see here also exists on our online form, which is down here at the bottom of this page. Before I get to that, I'd like to talk about family reports. And uh, family reports are a more, more affordable option if you are interested in seeing what we have done before on various families. And fortunately, the search function, oh, see, the search function now is not working. It was working a minute ago, five minutes ago, this was working. Am I right? We just looked at this, Nicole, right? <laughs> That's okay. Because we have a PDF that we can search. Just need to bring my screen down here and try to move over. There we go. Okay, uh, so this is our spreadsheet of all the family reports we have. And you can see it's 25 pages. So this is a lot of stuff. Um, and if you're not familiar with doing searches this way, it's a little, it's a little bit different than doing it with the online, uh, doing it through the website, but you can always do control F, uh, that's control key F. And then at the bottom of your screen, you should see you know, a find in page. And I've already looked up uh, the Bence family, they're not my Bence family, but these are the York County Bences, and uh, we do have a report in them. But um, if you do control F, you can do name searches, or you can, of course, browse through the 25 pages. Um, this is pretty extensive stuff. And these family reports were compiled by uh, Historical Society. This is back when it was the Historical Society of York County uh, by staff and volunteers from about the 1920s through the 1950s. So these are legacy reports. Um, they're representative of the research that was available to people, the sources that were available to people at the time. That's not to say that they're bad or that they're inaccurate. Uh, it's just that you know, they were looking at things that, um, that they had access to. And uh, we may have found other sources since this time um, because of research other people have done, but anyway. Uh, these are what the family reports look like. And I actually, I'm going to try to switch over here to, uh, can you see this report that I just brought up, Nicole? You didn't see it? Okay. I am going to try to share this PDF just so you have a sense of what a family report looks like. I brought up the Benz family report. Um, and you can see this is 34 pages. Um, last week, last week, a patron asked us to provide a 314 page family report, which we did. Um, that was the longest one that I've dealt with. And I've been at the YCHC for a year and a half, but that was a very long one. But many of these reports um, fall within the 20 to 50 page range. Uh, so it provides you a decent amount of detail. Uh, it's not necessarily everything, but you know, you can get a sense of um, what, you know, all these different name references that come up for each surname. This is the kind of stuff that you can find here. Um, and they can be extre extremely helpful depending on what you're looking for. And of course, if it's the right family. Okay, I will switch back. Oops. We'll switch back to my screen here. And let's talk about the research request form. Um, you can use this research request form to request the family reports as well as the full genealogy reports that we can do for you. Um, most of these things are self-explanatory. So you put in your basic information here and membership status is an important thing to, to uh, check out. 
For non-members, obviously you'll need to pay the full rate. Uh, for a standard genealogy request, that's $50. If you are a member of the History Center, then it's $35. And there are similar uh, cost reductions for the other kinds of reports. So once you fill out your information, you can check your membership status here. Uh, genealogy report, you, know, you click that automatically, it says $50. Um, this should, yep, yeah. and if you click current member, it takes it down to 35. Uh, our obituary searches, um, we don't do very many of these, and um, I'll tell you why. The reason is because a lot of the obituaries, many obituaries can be found online in, in a variety of sources, but they can also be found on newspapers.com uh, because, like I said, all of those things are searchable now. And if you're interested in doing that kind of research, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, family report thing, um, the basic fee for a family report is $15 and then you pay 15, or I'm sorry, 50 cents per page on top of that $15. So um, we, we ask that you be as specific as possible, you know, putting in your, your various, uh, your family names in here and trying to specify the volume and page number uh, which you can get from that, uh, from that spreadsheet that I showed you a few minutes ago. But the thing that actually changes the cost here uh, is the number of pages. So if you type in the number of pages, it automatically calculates how much uh, your total is going to be. It's $15 plus 50 cents a page. And in this case, that works out to $40. Um, and once you provide your information, then that will get processed and it will come to us via email. Um, did you want me to, did you want me to go on to the other sections now, Nicole, uh, for the genealogy and property searching? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, great. Um, you know what, I'm going to check the chat features. Um, I'm going to take Actually, a second. I've here. been I've been checking chat, Adam. Um, you have. Oh, there is a related question, which is a good question, asking okay. who did the family reports. Um, was it a genealogist or a volunteer? Um, I think we knew the answer to that. Sure. Um, there were many staff members and volunteers involved in this process over the decades. Uh, I believe that the first person to be involved in it was George Prowl, who was the original um, head of the archives and head of the museum uh, for the Historical Society of York County. So I believe that George Prowl was the first one to instigate these reports in the 20s before he passed away. Uh, after that point, um, they took a much more serious turn when Henry Young took over as the head of um, I believe at the time he was called the head of research in the 1930s, but Henry Young um, made doing the family reports a priority. He also prioritized putting together a lot of the vital statistics cards that we rely on today. So a lot of the material in the family reports was done in the 1930s and 1940s when he was at the Historical Society, but he had a number of other people working under him, um, including volunteers. So, um, and, and actually I should also add that the, uh, that in a lot of cases at the beginning of each report, you will see who compiled them. So usually it does list the, the compiler. Um, I see we have a, we have a question from, from Kay Arnold. Uh, do you want to handle that, Nicole? Or I think I also I also have her email. I could email the spreadsheet to her. She's asking where to find the listing, and there okay. is a, well, you know what? Let me go. I'll go back to that. Yeah, there is a link on the online request page and on the genealogy. So, so if you go to down to online request where I am. The list is right here, family report listing, and it's a PDF. It's a spreadsheet, but it's a PDF. So it should be easily accessible, uh, but it is on the genealogy page. If, well, see now, 
this one looks like it's working. It's so strange um, that uh, that this particular search that's working fine. So you can search the database. You just have to go to this particular page, um, and you can try various surnames. Um, yes, but uh, the reports list is also right here. Again, that's a PDF. So this is. So I moved over to our uh, to our uh, general genealogy research page, and we have links to a variety of ways of getting started and doing your genealogy. Um, I walked through these two sections already. Um, I think uh, in view of time, I'm gonna skip to some things that are also unique to the History Center. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is our partnership with the South Central Pennsylvania Genealogical Society. And uh, the SCPGS has worked with us for many years. Um, they, they hold their meetings with us and many members of uh, the SCPGS are also members of the History Center or, uh, and or volunteers. So um, they have provided a lot of their resources to us. And this price list, I'll open this up briefly. Uh, this price list is a list of their special publications, uh, which primarily are transcriptions or uh, compilations of genealogical research data, I should say. So uh, their publications are all accessible. You can see them on this PDF, which is right here on what on the price list. Um, these things are viewable in normal times in our reading room. Of course, right now, not so much, unfortunately. But you can buy any of these publications uh, through us. Uh, provided by the SCPGS. So if you're interested in that, please, uh, please let us know. The second major resource that uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, is a series of land records and maps produced by Dr. Neil Hively. And uh, what Dr. Hively has done in these resources is to compile lots of data about original land warrants that were granted by the proprietors of the Pennsylvania colony in the mid to uh, late 1700s. And these records, basically, these are the earliest land records for the Pennsylvania colony. Um, and because Adams County used to be part of York County, we have records for both. So we have access to uh, a series of very detailed and, and large maps of these early land transactions. We also have a series of books uh, generally organized by township. And you can see all of the listings right here. One of the nice things, we don't have all of the data available on the website uh, because these books are available in the reading room or for sale through our bookshop. But what we do have, if you want to open these PDFs, we do have uh, a list of all of the landowners that are named in the book. Uh, and, and I should clarify, not necessarily landowners or their people that are mentioned as being part of the land transactions described. So um, this, this is basically, these are helpful uh, indexes that exist to the Hively collection. I think that wraps up that page. So I will switch over to the property and research tab. Like I said, everything we're doing here today, uh, almost everything you can find by going to yorkhistorycenter.org, go into the library tab, and we're just going down one by one. So uh, I'm gonna move down to property and business research. <clears throat> okay. Um, what we have, we have, uh, I want to see if business, hmm, interesting, because I thought we had tried, the business side wasn't working the other day, I don't think, Nicole. Um, interesting. Well, what we have on this website is, uh, or in this page, is information about our various um, business and property research, research materials. And 
one thing I'd like to start off with when talking about doing property research, we, we frequently, I, I would say at least twice a month, uh, get requests about doing property research for individual homes. <clears throat> and something I'd like to point out regarding that, you can see with the researching your home guide right here. Uh, this is a list of the resources that we have available at the History Center in the Reading Room. And of course, uh, as I said before, we're, we're not open right now. So these things are a little bit more difficult to access. Um, that being said, these are the things that you can get from us. And um, this includes some things that I've already discussed. However, before, I, I would strongly recommend before contacting us at the History Center, in fact, I'm gonna highlight this section. Uh, we highly recommend that you start by doing your land research either at the Recorder of Deeds office, or I believe that these materials are also available at the York County Archives. And what you really ought to do first is to develop a chain of title for your property. And this will basically list all of the transactions of how the property passed from uh, grantor to grantee uh, over, over the decades and over the centuries, if the records go back that far. And what that will give you is a series of dates, but it will also give you a series of names to work with. And once you have those kinds of details, then you can come back to us and see what other resources we might have. So for example, if your land was owned by a John Smith in 1875, we might just happen to have the John Smith manuscript collection uh, that has letters about him, that has newspaper clippings, um, that has, uh, we might have ledgers from his business. So once you have those kinds of details, then you can come back to us and, and actually be much more successful at learning about your property and uh, the people who have owned it over time. Um, at the bottom here, you can also see, again, a link to uh, the Hively books. This is where lots of people will start when they're when they're working on land research, um, which can be very fruitful. If you already know where your property was, you can make that jump and go back and, and look at those warrants and uh, and get a sense of how the property evolved from that point. Uh, however, um, as with doing genealogical research, I think the same uh, the same applies to doing property research, it's best to start with what you know right now and work backwards rather than trying to make a jump back to the 1700s and, and try to work forwards because that's when it gets really tricky and, and, uh, and frequently, especially in genealogy, it can lead to some unfortunate mistakes. Um, do we have any questions right now? Right. Uh, are we in good shape, Nicole? Yeah, I think sure. we're good. Okay. Shall we move on to the next page? All right, very good. All right, thank you so much, Adam. That was really yeah. useful stuff. Okay, um, I'll stop my I'll stop my share. <laughs> okay. And I'll let you take over. All righty. <clears throat> and get the website back up here. Um, we're going to be looking at the um, military section of our uh, website next. Okay. All righty, here we go. So one of the drop down features, uh, you can see there's a lot of features here. Um, we're going to touch next on military research. We have uh, an extensive military collection, which is very useful both for genealogy and general history research. This page contains uh, guides, both guides to what we have on site at the library and actual databases that you can research at home. Uh, guides are useful because you can then plan your visit or contact us for specific information that you might see online. Um, the military records start with the American Revolution. 
Uh, we have a, a really interesting early collection of Revolutionary War records. Can we see that, Adam? Okay. Um, and this tells you more about some of the really interesting resources that we have from this period. Um, one of the things that we're going to be working on is to actually get our veterans records from the revolution digitized. Uh, they are not right now. Uh, these are the compilations that were done by the Historical Society for Early Veterans. Um, so that's something we're going to be working on hopefully this year. Uh, moving, moving on, we have a fair number of Civil War resources. Uh, there's a link here to look at a listing. Uh, we also have a fairly new resource here on the U.S. Colored Troops. This is a searchable spreadsheet, um, which is really um, very, you can see it's extensive. You can zoom in and search for individual people. Uh, there's over 200 veterans listed here on the Colored Troops uh, listing. So we're very excited about that feature. Okay. We also have many of the pension records. This, that, that information comes from the pension records and we have many of those records at the History Center. Uh, we have information here on a database compiled by Dennis Brandt. Unfortunately, we're having some technical trouble with this one today, but we are gonna get that fixed for you. Um, we do have access to all these databases at the History Center, so if you would like us to look up anything in particular, we can do that for you until we get it fixed. There's also a database on uh, Civil War damage claims that was produced by Scott Mingus. Please check back uh, in a couple weeks and hopefully we'll have those all fixed for you. Uh, we have a finding aid to the papers of General William Franklin, who was a Civil War general from York, large collection of his papers. Uh, this is just a guide to his papers, but there is history here about him and his life. Next, we have, uh, these are guides to our collections of World War I and World War II resources. Uh, these were just compiled this year by Brian Bailey and just uploaded to the website this week. So we're very, very excited about this. Um, it'll give you a chance to see the extent of our resources. Um, did that come up, Adam, the PDF? Okay, good. Uh, to the extent of our resources, both for World War I and World War II research. Um, this one is actually six pages long and it re uh, reflects the archival collections, manuscript collections related to World War I, including personal papers. So it's quite extensive and searchable. Uh, we have separate links here uh, to our, oh, hang on a sec here. Uh, archives would be our documents and personal papers, uh, photos. We have an extensive collection of photographs related to World War I and World War II. And library would be any published or large compilations that were done. Here's an example of the library page. So we have five pages worth of books just on World War I and its relationship to York County. So, so lots of great things to look at here. Um, again, they're not actual things you can read online, but they are things that can help you plan your next visit to the History Center. Um, we have all, a large collection that was donated by Jacob Devers, um, four-star general in World War II from York. And we're very excited to have his complete collection of personal papers, um, photo albums, over 90 photo albums. And there's some guides here to that collection that you can search. And many, and we do get requests from all over the country for information from this collection. Uh, we are also working on digitizing uh, all of his photo albums. 
and hope to be able to have some of those up on, on the website, uh, at least a collection of photos from his uh, photo albums uh, this year. Another resource here is a listing called the Veterans History Project. This was a, an oral history initiative uh, in, in the year 2000. Um, and we have lots of recorded oral histories. And this guide tells you, um, lists the people that we have oral histories from. So that's a good thing to check out if you're doing family research. Okay, let's see if I missed anything. I don't think so. Next, I'm going to touch on our the next page, which is our special collections and finding aids. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because these are also just guides to the collection. These are not databases, but there are some very interesting collections here. For instance, um, we have a fairly new, I believe we put this up last year, guide to our African-American collections in the History Center. Um, all these spreadsheets are set up so that they can be regularly updated when new research is donated and new collections. So we are very uh, pleased to have been able to compile a large collection of uh, both personal papers and institutional archives related to African-American history to help researchers. So please check that out. Those are searchable guides as well. Um, next, we have our Almanac collection, which is a very interesting browse. Uh, it just lists the titles and the years, but our Almanac collection ranges from 1755 to 1995 and is available for research on site. Uh, these are some of our other collections. Um, lawyer, uh, 19th century lawyer, Jeremiah Solomon Black's papers. Uh, we have the memoir of John Durang, who was an early uh, 19th century actor. Oh, Adam has a question. Would you be able to open that PDF? We had a question from one of the attendees about that collection, the, uh, the, Sol the, the, the Solomon Black collection. Sure, no problem. So this lists what we do have as far as his papers. So please feel free to dig into this on the website. There's a biography of him here. Um, other resources in the History Center related to him and a detailed listing of uh, his library that was donated to the History Center um, as well as some of his other papers here. So please let us know if any of that interests you. And hopefully it'll be, it'll be there for you when we reopen. We also have a collection of J.W. Gitt, um, who owned the Gazette and Daily uh, between, um, let's see, from 1915 to I think, I wanna say the 70s, uh, 1970. So we have a fair amount of his personal papers. We have a listing of our movie film collection, a lot of which uh, has been digitized. And the ones on the finding aid, uh, the guide here are things that have been digitized. Um, these videos span uh, the 1920s through the 1960s, and they are available to watch at the History Center. And um, some folks have even purchased uh, clips from the videos to use in their research. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, is we have um, a large, large collection of architectural drawings at the History Center. Um, there's a listing here of drawings by Charles Williams. Uh, more popular are our Dempwolf collections. And Adam's going to be talking about that on the next page because we, we have an, the ability, an actual database where you can scan um, actual images of his drawings on the next page. So are you ready, Adam, to take over? Okay. Sure, okay. Uh, any other questions on these pages? Um, 
Do you see anything, Adam? Uh, or... I'm taking a look on Facebook. I think we're good there. Okay. Um, but no, I, I don't see any current questions. Uh, here's one. Does YCHC have online viewing of the York County directories? We do not, however, there is a website. Is it Ancestry? Ancestry has them, yes. It, it doesn't have all of them, of course, but um, there are quite a few on Ancestry.com. Yeah. Uh, where, where did you see that question? Uh, it's up in the Q&A on the Zoom. Oh, okay. <laughs> so oh. many options. Oh, just came in. Okay. All Very right. good. Um, okay. I, see, I see that question is from Mike. If you have, I think you have my email, but if you write me, I can walk you through how to find those. It's, Ancestry has an awful lot of stuff that you can't find very easily, um, but I was able to find it a few times when we were shut down this summer because I needed to answer some questions that city directories could answer. So um, I'd be happy to help you with that. Okay, I will share my screen. Oops. And somehow I've lost. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. I have to have the right thing ready to go. There we go. Okay. So this, uh, just going down the list, this is collection databases. And I'm going to start at the end just because Nicole brought it up. Um, and I, I don't want to lose my train of thought on this. Um, probably many of you, or maybe all of you, uh, who are listening today are familiar with, uh, J.A. Dempwolf and, uh, Frederick Dempwolf and, uh, other people from that firm, which is very prolific. And, um, what's interesting about this collection, well, there are a lot of interesting things about it, but, uh, just in the last two weeks, I've gotten three different requests for Dempwolf drawings. So this is a very popular collection and not just with people from York County. Uh, the Dump Wolf Company did work for uh, lots of people regionally um, and also out of state. So um, this, uh, I'm learning things all the time about the reach of some of the for, some of the firms that make uh, that made York famous over time. So if you're interested, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this search. And this is actually reaching out to past perfect. And what you can see here is the search term in the box is Demp Wolf. So this is pulling up everything that comes in through Demp Wolf, uh, which is a little bit tough to search. Um, but usually these things are done. I'm just trying to get a sense of whether they're alphabetical or not. Um, in general, these things come up alphabetically, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. At least I'm not picking out a pattern. But this this contains everything that we have put in here, um, accessible through Past Perfect, through Past Perfect Online, anyway. And we have, we often have one or two different sets of scans. Sometimes we have some low resolution scans. Um, which we can make available to you just, just to get a sense of what's in the plans. But we also can provide high resolution scans of these images, which can be very helpful to people. Um, if, you're, if you're doing a restoration on a Dempo Wolf building, or if you simply are interested in a property and would like to have copies of these plans. Uh, a lot of people like to have copies of plans, Dempo Wolf plans for, for prominent York buildings. Uh, just for display purposes, if you get them printed out and put into a nice frame, um, they can be an interesting piece of artwork. So um, I I didn't pick out a particular I didn't pick out a particular uh, building here because it's kind of difficult to figure out where to start. But uh, there are so many great things to work with in this collection. Um, you can see just by scrolling through here. You know that that Demp Wolf did work. Like I said, they did work for a variety of different clients. Um, this one is this is this is one here that I was not even familiar with before. 
Uh, I should probably come back to that. But um, just picking something at random, um, private res residences are very popular. And you can see uh, this, this looks like it's just one plan. But some of these, I know that we have multiple, multiple sets of plans. There, then we have two different images in this one. So that's a front view of this church. Yeah, this is in New York, I thought so. And a side elevation. Um, so like I said, these, these images are accessible um, through us if you're interested in getting a, a high, re high resolution copy. And you can do that. <laughs> You can do that with this little feature right here. You click request image and fill out your information. And um, one of the nice things that it that it, it helps it helps us on our end, if you can fill out the purpose of this, it helps us figure out exactly what kind of a request this is. Uh, because we have different different schedules or fee fee structures here for the kind of request. Um, recently, uh, I believe it was maybe late. Maybe about a year ago, um, we lowered our we lowered the cost of image scans for personal use. Uh, before they had been thirty dollars for an image, uh, but we lowered them to fifteen dollars for personal use. So, if you own a house um, and you're interested in getting a copy of the Dempwolf plans, for example, then we can make those available to you for fifteen dollars for each scan, um, which you know is is not uh, an insignificant amount of money, but it is considerably cheaper than. Uh, than what it used to be. So, uh, but there are other fees then for uh, for nonprofits and also for for-profit use of these images. And as with all images that we provide, uh, there are other permissions you need to secure in order to get publishing rights. So if you had any intention of using it in a display um, or in a, a magazine, a journal, book, um, something like that, then that's another conversation we would need to have. Uh, so the Dempwolf collection, like I said, is very popular, but let's see if I can get back and take a look at some of the other ones. Um, lots of these collections are popular. So I'll start now, now I'll skip back to be, to be completely confusing. I'll, I'll skip back to the top and I'll start with the Bible collection, which is probably, probably of all of these, since I've been at the History Center, the Bible collection is the most popular uh, in this in this set of databases. And imagine why that would be. Uh, well, because Bible, Bible records, or I should say family Bibles from the 1800s and earlier often contain genealogical data. So there are two different ways of taking a look at this collection. We have a PDF. Um, again, you know, easily searchable if you do control F and put in your family name, um, you know, I, I, again, I'm using, I'm using what, what comes easily to me. Um, there are two different, two different Bents Bibles available here. So that's one way you could do it. Um, the other way is to take a look at our, again, this is through our past, past perfect records online. And uh, 378 records come up, which I believe is 378 separate family Bibles that are part of this overall collection. Um, so you can, again, scroll through these um, and take a look. Now, I thought the last time I looked at these, I know there's an easier way to do this. I thought the last time I looked at these, there we go, that's good. So you can search this Bible collection with a surname, which makes it far easier to use this, uh, which is great. So once you have your uh, selections narrowed down, then uh, you'll notice you notice a lot of stuff that I'm doing today. I always do uh, 
open link a new tab. And that's something I've been doing for many years because I don't like losing my search screen. Uh, something I recommend giving a try. Um, so we'll open that up in, in a new tab, switch over to it. And you can see these are the images that we have scanned for this family Bible. Now, um, we have not scanned all uh, 500, 600, I guess Bibles could be a thousand pages, um, substantially long books, obviously. So we don't scan every page of all the Bibles. Uh, but what we do scan is the most pertinent genealogical data and other things that uh, that are records of the families that have owned these Bibles over time, which might be genealogical or might simply be uh, notes from parents to children. Um, what we can see in this particular Bible, there are a few um, signatures. Looks like this is some handwriting practice. Uh, some some figures, it looks like someone's figuring out ages perhaps here. This is a note. Um, this is a note about the uh, provenance of the Bible. And then cover page. And then finally, we get a little bit of, uh, this looks like an, again, this looks like a, a note about the original owner. So in this particular case, no genealogical data. But most of the Bibles do, do have those. So this, this is what, here's an example. This is what people really want to get usually when they're looking at family Bibles, um, to get detailed information um, about marriages, births, deaths, etc. cetera. And um, what I said with the Dempwolf collection applies to this and it applies to our other image collections. You can order high resolution copies of these, uh, however, in the case of family Bible records, we often find that people don't necessarily need to get the best quality copies of these pages. They're primarily interested in having the data and also having an image to back up that data. Um, in that case, we can make Bible records available to people through something that we call a minimum research request, uh, which is kind of handled the same way uh, that the family reports work. And so it's like a $15 base fee and then 50 cents a page on top of that. And what we will provide to you then is not full resolution scans of each image, but we will provide a PDF of these images in color. And um, that is usually a good enough resolution for people for research purposes. So that is our Bible collection. We'll skip back here. Um, a few of these other collections are, they're all related in the sense that they depict places in York County in various ways. The Streets and Alleys collection is a really great collection, but of all of these collections, it's one of the, it's one of the tougher ones to search. Um, you can get there, uh, but, but it takes a little bit of time because, for example, um, you can see here that the search term that's bringing up these 1,573 images is streets and alleys. So say you're only interested in Market Street, you might say, oh, well, I'll just put in Market Street. Click search. And you come up with 1,573 hits. So you're still getting the same research uh, or the, the, you're getting the same results because um, it's bringing up streets and alleys, and then within that, it's bringing up the same hits for Market Street. Uh, so that, that kind of search is not as helpful. However, if you're taking a look at these, you can see, fortunately, these are in alphabetical order. Um, so if you're looking for Market Street, I mean, obviously, you, know, you see where we are, a beaver here. But if you skip forward, and this takes us to Center Square, you know, the best way to access this is to move forward until you find um, the street that you're looking for, which could take some time here. There we go. Um, and then you can browse properties. 
And for example, in this particular case, we're looking at East Market Street. These properties are actually going in uh, numerical order. So again, these, these images are available from the archives. Um, again, high resolution carries a certain fee. Um, however, if it's something where you're simply trying to get a snapshot of uh, a particular time period for building, um, we might be able to handle that differently. Um, the postcards collection. Works similarly. We have a sizable postcard collection, 1,421 images. And uh, if you're familiar with postcard collections, it shouldn't surprise you that we have multiples for the same place, but uh, not always the same postcard repeated multiple times. Um, which if you're looking for the right property, it could be helpful because you can see it depicted in various ways. So, um, maybe I should start. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, it doesn't, maybe that, this could be a broken link. I did not look at this earlier, Nicole. Um, but uh, several years ago, um, our late director, Lila Foreman Shaw, put together a book called Miller's Tales, which is a very popular history of, um, I think, primarily grist mills in York County. And um, we have that we have that listed here next to the Grant Voden uh, mill collection. Um, so Grant Voden uh, assembled an immense amount of research on York County mills, which is the basis of this. Again, fortunately, these are done in alphabetical order. Not terribly easy to search. Uh, however, if you know the family name of the mill that you're trying to locate, again, I, I suggest uh, clicking through these pages down here uh, to try to get it within the, close to it alphabetically, and you should be able to see what we have. Uh, again, similarly, <clears throat> the Scott Knob uh, Schoolhouse Collection. Alphabetical order. And in these particular cases, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking out loud on this, but when you're doing research on schools, it's often good to research if they ever had other names affiliated with them. Um, you know, much like churches, Schoolhouses would change names, change usage over time, uh, exactly how people referred to them locally. And then finally, our Charles Ness service station collection. This is a, this is a popular collection too. And, and in a lot of cases, the requests we've gotten from this are from descendants of people that worked for these stations or who owned them, uh, which I think is really neat um, because, you know, this is, service stations, gas stations, um, you know, car, uh, car repair places in general are a little bit ephemeral. Um, and, and these places are often forgotten within a few generations, but we have this great collection here, um, which spans, uh, which spans the county, I believe, although most of the service stations that I've run across are in York. And you can get a sense of uh, not just of what the station looked like, but also what the, the local topography looked like at the time. All right. Um, did, I, did I cover that? Is there anything else that, uh, that I can add, Nicole? I think that was great. Um, we don't have any specific questions that I can see. Uh, again, this is an area of our website, which we're going to be working hard to expand. Um, we have over, I believe, over 150,000 photographs in our archives. Um, so we'd like to be able to share more with, with uh, the community and the world <laughs> through our website. So we're going to be working towards that goal. Um, I 
think, Adam, if I could share my screen, we're just going to wrap things up with a couple closing thoughts. Um, and I just have to get back to the website. All righty. There we go. There's a couple pages that we haven't talked about yet on the, in the library section. One is our Share Your History project. Um, this, this page gives you more information about our initiative to, um, to reach out to underserved communities um, and gather more diverse stories in the county. So please check that out. Um, it was also a way we could, we started having scanning days and scanning events for people, which we really hope to be able to do in the new year. Um, there's also a link here that if you would like to donate digitally, any images, records, video, audio, you can do that on this page as well. So this is our community gathering um, research initiative. Also, we have our final page on the library uh, site is our partner programs. We are very fortunate to have a variety of partners, uh, as well as library initiatives. We have the Writers' Roundtable, which meets quarterly. Uh, these programs have started doing uh, their, uh, their programs virtually right now. Uh, so please, I believe the next one is in March. We also have partnerships with the South Central Pennsylvania Genealogy Society, the um, York Civil War Roundtable, and also um, the All Vets Oral History Group. Uh, unfortunately, these calendars uh, reflect 2020, but we are working with these groups to see um, what we can do for 2021. Um, virtually to start and then hopefully in person as we go. Uh, let's see. I want to thank everyone for joining us. It's been a pleasure to share this with you. Uh, are there any other questions? I think we have some in chat. Um, Adam, do you want to take a look at that? Um, and again, we're working to improve our website and add more digital content. If you have suggestions for content, that you'd like to see digitized or for webinar topics for the future, uh, please let us know. Anything, Adam? I do not see any additional. Uh, we just got a comment uh, that uh, we just got a comment from Rebecca that this is helpful because oh, um, we have so much stuff that's available online. But um, I admit, uh, going through this, preparing for today, that uh, I think it's a bit overwhelming. So it's not, yeah, well, I, I hope that this was helpful. Yeah, I hope so too. And please uh, take your time with the website. And if you have any questions, uh, Adam and I will both be available for you. And we hope that you all have a very happy holiday. Uh, all right. So thank you very much and take care. <laughs>